we are talking today about Leviticus. I'll, I'll throw in there as well. Get in a good church. Full transparency. This is something I've struggled with a lot in the past. I don't know 100% the validity of this. Hey everybody, thanks for checking out Basically Biblical. I'm Jesse and we are joined today by Jill. Uh, she is another uh, friend I, I've met through uh, one of the groups that I'm in. And uh, we're continuing on our testimony series. And before we dig into her story anymore, um, I'll go ahead and throw it to her. Let her give kind of a, a brief introduction of herself and what she's doing. So, Jill. Jesse, thank you for having me on the podcast. I look forward to chatting with you today and meeting virtually some of the people that will be listening later. Um, you know, currently I have two different things that I do. I have a leadership and marketing business called Elevate Leadership and Marketing, and I have a nonprofit called Looking for Answers. And we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about that later, but Looking for Answers really is the culmination of my entire story. And it's really cool to see how God used my past to dictate my future because he knew exactly what it was going to look like. That's good. I like that. Um, just that whole idea of, and, and that's what we've been seeing through a lot of these testimonies is the, the idea of what we, what we see in Romans where Paul writes that, you know, God uses all things uh, mm -hmm. that work together for good. And, really no matter where you are what you've done anything like that um he can end up turning it back around and, and having some type of a, a redeeming quality or, or something there with with really anything um so i i do know a little bit about your story um what i've tried to do with really all these testimonies is uh try to make sure that <laughs> there is an aspect of, you know, I'm, I'm bringing people onto uh, my platform. And so I want to make sure that they're um, vetted. You know, I've had some people that I've reached out to and I, I vetted them beforehand. And I'm glad I did because they had some rather interesting ideas that uh, I didn't want to promote. Uh, but with these testimonies, I did want to make sure that I'm not 100% in the loop on, on what you've gone through what your story is that way I can kind of listen in um, kind of hear maybe what an audience member would be hearing to you for the first time. Uh, so I do know that you have a kind of a history with uh, within Judaism, uh, both your parents were, and that eventually led to some uh, psychic stuff. So we can start uh, usually the best place to start the, is the beginning. And so I'll throw it to you if you want to start maybe a little bit of your upbringing, um, how this eventually led to uh, what you got into and and maybe what the 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 start of, of all that was for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to share. You know, I, I grew up with my mom. Um, she was a single, you know, single mom raising us. My my dad and her, she, they divorced when I was about five. And I'd like to say from that time on, I was actually looking for answers, but nobody taught me what the answers were or really how to look, Jesse. So um, we did grow up Jewish, but the only thing I really knew about Judaism was, you know, we'd hang out for, you know, dinners, you know, we'd get together for Rosh Hashanah and then we'd have Passover and then I'd hear some Hebrew and my sister and I would just kind of giggle because we didn't know what it meant. And you know, today I like to just say it was religious. You know, I, I kind of wish now being a Christian, I actually appreciate it because I feel more Jewish today than I did back then. Um, mm -hmm. I grew up, the whole neighborhood was Jewish. So everybody was Jewish and we lived in a super dysfunctional neighborhood. So I'll just leave it at that. You know, sometimes you just don't know what you don't know. Um, I was always having conversations, you know, with my mom, like, how did we get here? And how does the human body work? You know, like we're not plugged in and neither one of us had the answers. You know, we believed in flying saucers and we believed in ESP, ESP and, you know, I would play with my Ouija board, not realizing that was probably not the thing to do. Yeah. Um, I, yeah right. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> so I would have to say though, I, I, you know, I was thinking about this earlier. From what I remember, my first taste of what I think was Christianity was on my 16th birthday when a guy came to my house just to say happy birthday. And 
he never said he was a Christian, but I think he was because it was one of those times when I knew we had a deep, deep conversation. I knew it was spiritual and I literally felt like I was on a high when he left. And it's kind of like that scripture that says, you know, like sometimes that that seed is sown, but then it's stolen because it, you know, couldn't it couldn't produce fruit. I guess I wasn't really ready right. to hear it. And I've always wanted to talk to him because I just know in my heart it was. And I had another friend who talked to me about Christ later on, and I knew there was something different about him. So I would see these little things that I knew something was different, or I knew somebody was a Christian, but it didn't mean anything to me because, you know, we just grew up saying Jews don't believe in Jesus. And that was the end of that. Um, I had actually never even heard the gospel, had never had a Bible, so knew nothing. Um, and so it was a real easy way for me when I was exploring to be introduced to the new age. Um, I don't really remember exactly when it started, but what I do remember is when I was in college, I was in journalism, and there's a town in Florida where I live called Casadega. It's a town of all psychics, and they have their own government. Okay. I was fascinated, Jesse. I was like, what on earth is this? So me and the cameraman went there. We interviewed people. And I kept thinking, like, why on earth is this bad? You know, this one guy was helping to find um, kids of parents who, like, they either were runaways or they had been kidnapped. And he was helping them. And, you know, I'm like, this is just fascinating. And again, what I didn't know back then is I had a prophetic gifting, which I thought was more of a psychic activity. So okay. I would... Yeah, I would visit psychics. I had one guy that I dated for a while that was in the service. His mom was a psychic. So, you know, she would read my, you know, my palm and, you know, we would do that stuff. And then when I graduated college, I took another class to learn about more psychic activity. This was the crazy part. At the end, the last day of class, we were practicing everything that we learned. And the one thing I remember was this sounds dumb, but it is what it is. And there is a demonic world, but they would put a flashlight on somebody's face and they'd say, if you would squint, you would see that person change faces. Like they would like a woman would turn into a man. You would see somebody of a different, somebody who was white might end up being an Indian. And that sounds dumb, but I can tell you when I did it, I was seeing into the spirit world. Didn't understand it, but I literally would look at like, a white woman, and all of a sudden I would see a Chinese man. Through this process of seeing all this, I saw one of the most demonic things that I had ever seen because it was literally seeing something that was not human. It had horns. I blinked. You know, I did one of those numbers. And I saw it twice, didn't understand it. But for some reason, I knew some of that was like God knew I was looking for answers, and I didn't know he was going to take that and lead me away from it. But in that process... He introduced me to somebody in business. And I am sure you realize that, Jesse, sometimes, you know, it's not traditional. Somebody invites you to church and you go and you get saved and you just, you know, walk right. down the aisle. I wouldn't have gone to church, you know. So right. I met a couple during this time when I was seeking and doing all this psychic activity, went to, you know, her husband gave me a book called No Wonder They Call Him the Savior. It was all about Jesus. I mean, he never talked about Jesus. I knew he was religious. Um, I asked him once why he was religious and he just said, I'm not religious. He said, I just love the Lord. And I'm like, well, I don't know who this Lord is he loves, but okay, he's a nice guy. So I'll, I'll read his book. And I read that entire book in two days. And I would say that was really the beginning of my heart opening up to this Jesus that I didn't know. Um, shortly after I, I went to a business seminar with them. They had a church service on Sunday, had no intention of going, but his wife, who happened to be Jewish, but was also a, mess a Messianic Jew, so she was Christian, right. she's, like, she's like, Jill, why don't we just go? You know, like, she goes, you're already here, so why not just get the whole experience? And I went, okay. So I went there, and she had this lady that was singing. Again, I don't even know what worship is, but she sang a song called El Shaddai. Have you ever heard that song by any chance, Jesse? I believe so, yeah. Well, it's it's in Hebrew. And again, I don't know Hebrew, but my heart was pounding and God was drawing me. And I was like, again, I didn't know what this meant. Nobody explained the gospel. So I did what anybody else would do. I ran. <laughs> you know, I said, I'm not going to run up. And I ran. Um, all I can tell you, it was a series of different things. And this 
friend of mine who was Jewish that I talked about, her name was Arlene. She would always pray with me when I had a need. And even though I didn't want to accept Jesus, I, I was willing to accept prayer and it, and it always touched me. And I would go to church with them occasionally and the worship would always touch me. It would always be like, these people are worshiping a God I do not know. So one day I sat down on my bed in my little two bedroom condo and I lived alone at the time. And I just said, God, I, I, I don't know who this Jesus guy is. You know, I, I think you're real. I'm not positive. I think you're real. But if he's real, show me. And that's all God needed. You know, <laughs> I, again, opened up the door and then I just started having conversations with people. And he used so many different people to share Jesus with me. So I don't know at what specific time that I accepted Jesus, but I'll, I'll leave you with this part that to me was the most supernatural thing to this day that I think happened. One day again in my condo alone, and I, you know, hear the word Isaiah in my head, and I'm like, what's Isaiah? Who's Isaiah? And I remembered somebody gave me a Bible, and I'm like, oh, let's see if there's an Isaiah in the Bible. And I hear in my head Isaiah 53. And if you go to Isaiah 53, it is in the Old Testament, and it's all about Jesus. And I'm like, wait a minute, you know, Jews don't believe in Jesus. Like, what is this? Like, this is describing everything that happened to Jesus. So then again, in my head, I had this conversation with this God I did not know, did not even realize this was so supernatural. And for that 30 minutes, he took me from the Old Testament to the New Testament in this book, the Bible, that I had never read. And we went from Isaiah to Jeremiah to Romans to John and just to the different gospels. And if I had known how powerful it was at the time, I would have written down every scripture. Um, but in that 30 minutes, he showed me Jesus in the old and Jesus in the new. And from that day forward, it was settled in my heart that he was my savior. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Um, so as as you were talking, there's a, a couple things kind of stuck out. Um, I know for, for me personally, I've always been, I grew up in a, uh, a Christian home. My dad, um, my parents were, my mom was raised in church. My dad very much wasn't, but he kind of had to fake it in order to date my mom. And then that led to like, uh, once they found out that my mom was pregnant with me, my dad, like he really had this like gut check moment, like, Hey, I'm about to be a dad. I have no idea what I'm doing. I need to figure this out. And so that kind of led to him really getting in pursuing God. Um, but my dad's a pastor for most of my life that I remember. My dad has been a, a senior pastor at a church, but, um, I'll say I've always had this like, uh, interest with, um, kind of the, the supernatural side of of the the christian faith and i think there's a lot of christians that don't really consider that side of it and the fact that you know people don't go to psychics or witch doctors in africa or stuff like that just because they're bored and they have nothing to do they go because they see a demonstration of power yeah. um now our view as Christians, you know, our, our worldview, we can make sense of that. We'll say, yeah, there is a power there. It's a, a you know, a, a, a fake counterfeit of, of God. There is something supernatural there. Um, but there's a lot of people that just write off a lot of that stuff. And I think the church especially <laughs> really needs to, to not do that. We need to be able to dig into the stuff and have answers for them. Um, as you were talking to it, it made me think, I don't know if you're familiar with her. There is, um, she has a YouTube channel. It's a, a decent sized YouTube channel. Her name is Melissa Doherty. Um, well, she, so she was raised, um, she was, she thought she was Christian, but really yeah. it was a lot of new age repackaged yeah. as Christianity. And uh, there's a lot of things there. Like she talks about, she uh she would she would meditate and she would go into this trance and what she said was she'd feel like this vibrating like she could only describe it as like a, a buzz like in her head and she would see this um dark figure 
and she was told by the person that that was her um like her spirit guide i think spirit is, is guide. Yep. that's what um, it is yeah yeah and so like and, and this was a very very real experience yeah she believed that this was biblical but after she became a christian she she was thinking back on this stuff and she had had that happen on more than one occasion and she actually interacted with this being had like so like now she's thinking back and she's like oh wow like that that was demonic like 100 that was demonic yeah. and i was just opening the door for it letting it in um and so there's there's a lot of stuff like that that i think as christians it kind of gets pushed to the side we don't i think there's a lot of stuff that people don't want to talk about because they may not have an answer for it or a lot of those conversations get messy um but those are conversations that we need to have as christians and so that's an interesting to kind of see you you diving in there um at that starting point because you saw like hey there's something here and it it appears to be good you know they're they're doing good things with it they're trying to help people with it um so that was uh like i said that was, that was very very interesting to to kind of see how that went forward for you so you know you've talked a little bit kind of about you uh kind of making that transformation you know god started working on your heart um you know i i i'm a firm believer that uh, if you want to know god he will make himself known to you yeah. even i think we see examples of this even in uh you know i have i have friends that are missionaries in the the middle east and africa and they have stories of these uh especially in africa there's tribes of people mm -hmm. that have never really had connection with any outside world that they have come across and they're aware of jesus um they don't have any bible like nothing like that but they just they were they were trying to find answers they were earnestly trying to seek um god and he came to them in a dream and he he revealed himself and so i think even if you don't have all the resources it, it can happen if you really yeah. want it to happen um so with with you kind of going through this, um, being able to see Jesus in the Old Testament, which is a, a beautiful thing um, to work through and be able to see how that works. So now going into after that that conversion has made, um, you know, what are some of the changes you start to see or you start to implement in your own life? Um, I'm sure that you probably had some connections with some people that were in the, the psychic community that were still there. Um, I, I'm kind of interested to see how maybe some of that went, um, how it, how it was taken by some other people that you, you had this new lease on life, uh, and you found the, the real truth. Yeah. Jesse, can I just say one more thing about the psychic stuff that God did like right after I yeah. was saying, yeah. cause I think for your audience, this can be so powerful cause you're right. There's, there's Christians that if they're not really in the word or they don't know, they probably, delve into some of that activity and it's really not healthy it's not godly um it's, it's not what god wants for them and it's an open door and i i remembered during this process i went to a church in jacksonville florida again with my friend arlene and i remembered i said to her this christian stuff is so cool i said this goes perfectly along with all the stuff i'm learning in all the psychic activity in my psychic class and if I could tell you the look on her face, like her jaw dropped and I could see yeah. like she didn't have a clue what to say, but I, I didn't know. You don't know what you don't know. I hadn't really read much of the word. Right. So she didn't say anything. But that day, and there's only been two days like this, that day, this particular pastor did a teaching on the new age and psychic activity. And he went to the Old Testament and he showed why it was not pleasing to God. And, and it was not, it wasn't a judgment thing. It wasn't anything. It was more like he was explaining. So right. again, just like God showed me Jesus, he settled in my heart that no, these two were not aligned. And that's my hope for anybody in your audience that's listening. If they think it's just fun or they think it works with God, just get into the word, you know, don't even take my word for it. Just look up psychic sorcerers, mediums, you know, just see what God has to say, because 
that's one thing, you know, that I think changed, you know, after I got saved to answer your question is I started reading the Bible. And when you, read, when you read the Bible, your heart changes, you know, it's all of a sudden you're like, Oh, I didn't know that. It's, it's like a Bible can be the conversation with God, but it's also, he shows you what your beliefs should be. You know, a lot of, we're, we're going to believe anything when we don't have a real source. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I'd like to say I found a church right away, but it actually took me a full year. And I went from churches to churches and got something out of every church I went to. But until I found the church that I currently go at, um, which I've actually been there now for 30 plus years, it was home for me. And I, you know, like I said, I'm sure I went to a lot of great churches, but I think everybody has to find their home. So right. my pastor early on taught us, don't believe something because I say it, you know, get into the word for yourself pray and like you know like i said i think the church has a place the church is really important but the church is not your answer jesus is the answer god is the answer you know your bible's the answer and then the church and the people in it were they're a part you know we're meant to do this journey together so to give an example you know how things started to change it wasn't because people told me everything I was doing was wrong. <laughs> you know, um, you know, I was in a relationship with somebody and I didn't know if we were going to get married or not, but I knew we needed to kind of separate for a while. Um, he thought I was a Jesus freak. My parents thought I was a Jesus freak because I became one of those radical Christians and I'm a salesperson. My background is sales. So I know how to persuade. So I was obnoxious, right. you know, I was just right. like, I didn't mean to be, but I, I wanted everybody to now meet this Jesus that I knew. So we'll just say I had to calm down a little bit, but that was part of it. And then, you know, there were things like issues, like I probably believe totally contrary to what the Bible said at that time. And I could say a lot of stuff, but like, you know, one, one part in particular was, was, you know, I was, I used to be pro, what would you say I was? I'm pro-life now. So I was pro-choice. Okay. Um, and I can share, I mean, I had an abortion when I was in college. I had the end of my first year of college, I was pregnant. My parents actually set it up for me. Didn't even know I had a choice. Um, nobody discussed the choices with me. You know, that's a story maybe for another day, but, yeah. uh, you know, in my heart, I knew it was wrong. And yet I would tell you I was pro-choice, but you know, what nobody knew, was how I would cry myself to sleep for two years and that I had nobody to process with and I, I didn't understand and I was grieving and nobody was helping me to grieve. So yeah. one day there was a, a rally, a pro-life rally, and I felt like the Lord told me to go. And I'm like, well, why would I go to that? Like, I'm not even sure what I believe anymore. And he said, just go, just show up. And I said, okay. So I showed up to that pro-life rally and the only thing I remembered was just standing there with these people. Nobody said anything to me, but for some reason, my heart changed that day. And from that moment, it became real. And then I read, I think it's Psalm 139 that talks about how God knit us together in the womb. And so I knew that, you know, that abortion was wrong. And again, I would never judge anybody else because I've been, been through it myself. I have great compassion and God heals and restores and redeems, but that was, that was one point, but as I read the word, just a lot of my viewpoints changed. Um, and I will add, I think sometimes that's where Christians sometimes can get it wrong is don't expect everybody else to have their viewpoints change right away. We're all yeah. a work in progress and oh, yeah. we're going to scare off a lot more people or do more damage to the kingdom of God if we don't give people room to grow, you know? Right. Um, and then the other thing, the biggest change I would say is the fruit of the spirit. You know, you, you get baptized, you know, I was water baptized. I was baptized in the Holy spirit. And a lot of times people say like, Oh, you know, tongues, do you speak in tongues or not? And I'm like, you know, regardless of what you believe on that, it does say the Holy spirit gives you power. It does say the Holy spirit had to come because Jesus, you know, left. So the Holy spirit came and he reminds us of the things that we need to know, um, you know, corrects us, comforts us. Like that's a whole nother part of the Trinity. So yeah. I would say 
when I'm living for him. And that's like my big thing this year is instead of setting a lot of goals, I'm just saying every day, Holy Spirit, will you please just lead me today? I want to be a blessing to people. I want to be kind. As I get older, I want to be kinder to people. And I, I want to make a difference in people's lives. And, you know, let me use my time and energy and money for your glory. So I think I'm no longer living for myself in everything I do in my business. And like I said, I have a nonprofit today. I'm living for the Lord. So like give you one other example and then I'll let you ask questions if you have more questions. But like in my marketing business, I ended up doing a lot of leadership seminars and that led to me doing some consulting with a national company and, and I would help people. And in that season of life, what I loved is, is because you could be a Christian or not, but a lot of the Christians were the ones running the business at the time, but it was values based. So we had a chance to teach people as leaders and business leaders and church, you know, to be value based and to, you know, bring a lot of value to the workplace as well. And that things were all about people. So, right. and then, like I said, I'm running my nonprofit now, and that is mainly to help people go from their pain to their purpose. But before I keep blabbing, I'll let you talk. So if you want to comment or ask anything. No, no, you're good. Uh, so it's, it's interesting uh, that you bring up. I, I've had this, I, I've talked about it, I think on, I think it was during one other interview. Um, yeah. But I, so I, I recently, I try to be prayerful about any topics that I'm going to discuss or cover or teach on or, or anything like that. Um, because like this, I mean, the whole podcast really started out of reluctancy on my part. I didn't want to do it. I didn't think that I should do it or could do it. Um, and yet yeah, here I am doing it. But um, I, even like this, this testimony series, I had the idea, um, kind of didn't want to do it. You know, it, it is, it's a lot harder to set something up with other people. Whereas, you know, if I'm, if I'm just doing like a teaching or something, I can study and all that on my own. And then just like, hey, I've got an hour tonight. I can sit down and, and do something. I don't have to plan out as much or be as um, intentional on my end to, to set that stuff up. And it ended up, uh, that'll be the entire entire month of January as testimonies. And then at least the first two months of February is going to be as well. Um, but going out of that, I felt like the fruit of the spirit was something that I, I should like cover and, and teach on a little bit. <clears throat> um, again, I really didn't want to, I had some other thoughts, other stuff that I've, I've really been wanting to get in and tackle and I just couldn't shake this feeling. So I'm like, okay, well I'll do the fruit of the spirit. It'll be like, you know, let's do like three weeks. Cause I do about a, I'll do a one video a week. It's about an hour long. Um, and so I'm like, okay, we'll do the fruit of the spirit and I'll do like three weeks. I'll, I'll, I'll do like maybe an introduction and do the first couple and then I'll do another couple and then we'll finish it out. And with what I have planned out now, it is going to be at least 10 weeks. It depends on how much I end up getting through as I, as I go through and continue the study here. But I found that there is, there, there's a lot of resources out there for the fruit of the spirit that is targeted for children um and a lot of that even is very very surface level there's not really a ton of stuff talking about the fruit of the spirit and i am uh, i am a charismatic i believe the gifts of the spirit are for today and really seeing um how well let me say this too i i self-describe as a charismatic with a seat belt um, so I believe the gifts are for today, but I also believe that there are some guardrails that are put in place in scripture that we need to be adhering to, but, but really getting in and, and, and studying this, there's a lot of stuff even kind of tied in around the gifts that go back to the fruit that if it, it rings true to what, what Paul says, you know, if I speak in tongues of men and of angels, but I don't have love, then I'm nothing but a noisy gong. And so really, I think that should be even, like I said, believing in the gifts 100% are for today. That is something I think more Christians really need to grab a hold of. And um, I've kind of done a similar thing this year, like what you talked about. I've really tried to focus intentionally on day to day going forward, um, especially as I'm as I'm 
prepping and doing the study for the for the fruit of the spirit but really trying to see places where i am falling short every day in my life to show the fruit to live in a way that's led by the spirit <clears throat> and trying to just go each day you know I, I do a little bit better today than i did yesterday and i'm going to do a little bit better tomorrow than i do today and um it has been very very eye-opening to me um a lot of stuff i haven't even thought about um but trying to be a lot more intentional with that um so i just i thought it was interesting because as i've as i finally agreed to like sit down and do this fruit of the spirit thing i've seen just randomly um my, my pastor one sunday made a comment about it like you know are you actually and it wasn't even like he had i asked him about it after the fact it wasn't in his notes it wasn't he was just kind of going and it came up popped in his head so he said it i've had um several other individuals that have made comments and it's really cost me to kind of dig in and then i said it's come up like i think at least one other time in these interviews maybe two um there's just been there's a lot of stuff and so i think that's something that that a lot of christians need to uh really evaluate and really check out and and take that for your own life you know looking just read read through galatians 5. i've, I've read through galatians 5 uh probably a hundred times in the last like two weeks uh just going through this um just i'll i'll read through read through read through um but <laughs> uh sidebar there back to uh what we're talking about here with you um so i do know you you've talked about your nonprofit a little bit you've talked about and i know you do have some other stuff coming out um so if you want real quick talk a little bit about specifically your your nonprofit what does that do um maybe how have you seen that help and impact some people uh podcasts that you're planning that you have coming up um anything like that anything at all that you see you're involved in or that you see god using kind of your testimony to to help other people to to work in their lives and um if, if there's anything that uh anybody listening can do to to partner with you to assist with that or even um, if there's a, another minister or something like that that you know is good that kind of goes along with this that you want to shout out um, anything like that and I'll, I'll also say anything that you have um, you can mention it and then afterwards just send me links to everything you want in the description and I'll put all that in the description of the video so anybody that's watching if something that she says sticks out to you, look in the description. There will be links for all of that down there. So, no, that sounds that sounds great because you know definitely talking about what I'm most passionate about and how I feel like God weaved my whole story just so I could help other people at this point. So you know, as I mentioned earlier, Jesse, you know I was always looking for answers, and that's the name of our nonprofit is looking for answers, and it's the looking the number four answers, but where it first started was when I was running my leadership seminars. And this was like maybe year five. And we would have like about 500 yeah. leaders in the room. And like I say, you know, my heart was to see our city transformed with leadership. And then with the consulting relationship I had, share with others so we could just bring transformation to our communities. And, you know, we reached out, we had our church leaders, we had our government leaders, we had people from the schools, from the colleges, from businesses, from the chamber. So it was really a big community thing. This one particular day, one of my top promoters, Bill, um, I ran into him and he was kind of harried. And I was like, oh, one of his kids is getting married. And I didn't think twice about it. But two weeks later, I found out that Bill committed suicide. And that broke my heart because as would anybody, because I'm like, I had no idea. And that one incident combined with, I think what I, you know, went through growing up in my life and I would, where I would think about the statistics of the news. And I was like, you know, God, sometimes people are looking for answers and they get so hopeless that they take their lives. And sometimes life is just so difficult. And we have so many challenges and situations and mental health issues and relational issues. And I'm like, I just want to put my fingers in my ear and go, blah, 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 blah. I said, but I think the better thing to do is to say, how can I be a resource and how can I be an answer for others? And that's when he gave me the name looking for answers. So the short end of it is 
Our mission is to give people hope for today and lead people from their pain to their purpose. And right now, our goal is we started, well, let me back up. We started in 2020, not knowing that COVID was going to go on and on. And then yeah. even when we started back up with our events last year, it still was never like it was before COVID. So a lot of what I've done the last couple of years has been laying a foundation. You know, we built our website. We've added some resources. Um, you know, we've run some parenting seminars for people. Like there's things that we're doing, but it's it's still very much a startup but with the one of the main goals is is i want to reach next gen so i want to reach those kids who either walked away from the church or those who never knew god and as you know there's there's probably enough that just walked away from the church um i want to reach them where they're at you know just like yeah. people weren't going to reach me by inviting me to church and i do invite people to church so don't get me wrong i don't want people to think i don't i love my church but right. I want to meet them right where they're at. You know, Jesus went after the one. So I want to go after the one. And where are they at? They're on their phone, you know, seven, eight, nine hours a day. They're on social media. They're on TikTok. They're on Instagram. They're, you know, if they're older like me or mom or grandmother, then they're on Facebook. Um, they're binge watching their favorite TV shows. So I want to interrupt their world with messages of hope and just like yeah. you're doing testimonies i want to share very short short clips of testimonies or something that gets their attention and then lead them to our website which has resources for both mental health and relational health the relational health we're going to add like within the next month and we're going to do it with both with faith-based and practical resources because one of the things that you know i think about are what kids deal with in schools these days, whether it's a school shooting, whether it's bullying, you know, all the different stuff that you can think of. Um, and I'm like, if I can reach them right where they're at and then give them and or their parents resources, then that next generation, they're the ones that are gonna lead us. So anyway, I'm kind of going round and round, but there's, in addition to next gen, I also wanna reach the parents and I also wanna reach leaders because leaders will help us to reach the next generation. So right now we're fundraising to do our first media campaign because the media is not going to give you a bunch of ads for free. Um, yeah. You know, I have, I have favors I call in and you can get a little bit, but I'm starting in my state, Florida, and then I want it to go national. But in addition, we're looking for the changes we can make in our local communities and still be that catalyst for people in other communities by running parenting seminars, by offering events to our schools, offering our events to leaders, and specifically gearing it on relational and mental health. Because no matter what you're involved in, everything is about people. And I really think you need that balance of having faith-based resources, leading people to Jesus, but there also has to be the practical. There's plenty of Christians that still need some of the practical stuff as yeah. well. Oh, a hundred percent. I, uh, so I'm actually, um, I'm not too far from you. I'm in South Georgia, so I'll, uh, we'll keep in touch and I'll keep an eye on if you've got anything coming up. Um, sounds like something I may be interested in. I've, so that's, I've, I've tried to take some of the same approach with this podcast. Um, the one thing that is drives the most traffic to my my long form teaching stuff is shorts, reels, stuff like that. Um, that's where you, you can catch people's attention in ten yes. seconds and make them make them think think something else or go to something else. Um, I despise doing the reels. <laughs> they they take so much time to edit and like. I like, I like being able to, like, I've done all the legwork for, like, you know, figuring out the teaching and how I'm going to present this and how I'm going to walk through this argument or whatever. Um, and so then I can just, I have everything ready. I can just sit down, record, talk through it. If I've got, like, a PowerPoint or slides or, or photos or stuff like that to show, I can do that. But, but editing for the reels and stuff is so tedious and it takes – you have to condense like these big broad points down to fit in 60 seconds. And I don't like it, but I, <laughs> I, I will say that is, um, I have definitely seen if, if you want, if, I, I, I preach that same thing. I want to meet people where they're at. And I think that this next generation that's coming up 
is they're hungry for authenticity and truth. Yeah. Like I think no other generation has been. And that generation is scrolling through reels on Instagram and TikTok and looking at Facebook shorts or YouTube shorts. Um, so if, if that's where they're at and I want to meet people where they're at, then I got to go where they're at. And um, so that's something I've, I've really tried to implement as well. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm interested to see. Um, I'll, I'll keep in touch. Definitely uh, to see anything new coming up. And I like uh, partnering too with, with other ministries, especially if, uh, if, if there are elements that align um, mission right. what we're looking to do and, and things like that. So that is, <clears throat> that is definitely something that um, I think uh, I, I see some definite crossover and in, in just what you've said and what you guys are looking to do and kind of what my vision is here for, for what we're doing as well. Um, but I uh, think we can start wrapping it up. I, I appreciate your time today. Uh, you had a, a great testimony, very interesting testimony. And I do think it's going to edify people. I think it's going to help point people back to Jesus, which is ultimately what uh, all of what, what both of us are trying to do. Um, and so that's great. And if, if anything Jill has talked about sounds interesting, if you want to get plugged in in any way or um, connected or, or look into some of the stuff that she's brought up. All of those links will be in the description. Uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you dislike the video, hit the like, hit the dislike button twice. Um, so that way it uh, double tells me how much you dislike it. But I uh, appreciate everyone's time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And God bless. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Basically, that was cool. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you always get notified out with new content which we do full videos once every week and we have shorts come out throughout the week uh, even on the weekend so. so you can actually click up here and it will take you into uh, the playlist this video is from if you like that you can see some more that's more specific to what you just watched or you can check out down here and it'll take you to youtube's top pick of our content for you specifically thanks god bless